Welcome everyone, Kyle here and welcome back to the channel for another Mattel Elite unboxing and review. And today on the channel we've got Legend Series 12, Kevin Nash, the Target exclusive. And as you guys know, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging, we're going to talk about it, we're going to unbox it, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to do some deep comparisons at the end of the video with some other Kevin Nash's through the years via Mattel. So let's take a look at the packaging first, let's kick it off with that. There's that Legends 12 packaging, that familiar brown. You can see it a mile away when you're walking to the toy aisle and you just start salivating. You say, do I got something new out there? And I will tell you, early findings of the store reports, you see it in my figure hunting videos every single Friday out there. Uh, Kevin Nash has been the one that's been hitting my area. JYD's shown up in a few places we've seen, but Kevin Nash, they've had full cases of him. I have not seen Billy Gunn. I have not seen Roddy Piper in the uh, flesh out there at the stores. I did luckily uh, pre-order all these as I usually do, and they came through the mail, so that's how I got those. Uh, but I'm sure, give it some time, we'll see everything out there. I don't know if anybody's really struggled too hard with this Legend set. Uh, if you wait it out and you look around for a while, you can even get some deep clearances out there on these. Uh, but we'll see where it goes with uh, this set, Legend 12. I don't know. If the holidays coming up, you'd have to think they'd sell a little bit better. Time will tell. Time will give us the answer. But we got the True Effects logo right there, Legend Series 12. You got the Mattel Elite logo with the NWO spray paint over it, which is always a nice touch. You got the WWE Legends background behind Kevin Nash there. You got Kevin with extra hands, of course. And then you got that outsider shirt, which is a big selling point for a lot of people. I know some people are buying two of these to get doubles of those shirts. Um, then you got the glamour shot of uh, Big Sexy right there, looking as sexy as ever. Uh, WWE Legend logo, Kevin Nash, of course. Beautiful artwork glamour shot on the side. Somebody drew that picture. Same one on the other side, and they spray painted over the Legends once again with NWO. Oh, those, those no good NWO lights. They're just spray painting everything. UPC's warnings, nobody cares. On the back, you got JYD, you got Nash, you got Billy Gunn, you got the Piper Man down there. Uh, empowering the next generation through play as well, as we see. NWO covering up the Elite logo up at top again. That same Kevin Nash glamour shot. Then we got the blurb. We'll read the blurb. You guys know I love a good blurb. So let's read what it says about our old pal, Kevin Nash. Titles, WCW World Heavyweight Champion, WCW Tag Team Champion. So they're not bringing up any diesel in this. This is just strictly Kevin Nash. That's the way it should be. One of these days we'll do a top five Kevin Nash. We'll probably do a top five Diesel. Makes sense. Uh, Scott Hall promised the WCW Monday Nitro audiences a big surprise, and there aren't many surprises bigger than Kevin Nash. So this is where the big boys play, huh? Well, we don't play, he laughed. Uh, signaling to his buddy Hall that it was time to take over, as cornerstone of the NWO, the Outsiders and the Wolfpack, Big Kev launched an invasion that didn't just take over WCW, but captured the attention of the entire world. He's the reason why when you're NWO... Your NWO for life. So there you go. Personally, I always like Kevin Nash better as Kevin Nash in WCW than I did Diesel. Diesel was okay for a while, uh, but I was not. The new generation time frame was probably my lowest peak in wrestling. I was still watching. I was still watching WCW, uh, but it was just a pretty low time for my fandom. Uh, I would just, you know, it's like a ritual. I'd go through it and I'd watch it, but nothing really jumped at me, especially Diesel. You guys know I love big dudes. I love big jacked up dudes. And you think I'd be all over the Diesel character, but just it was just kind of there for me. That's how I'd explain it. But then WCW Nitro had the, the big crossover, all this kind of stuff. Everybody jumping ship. And that really gave the punch in the arm. And then my old favorite ECW was going on. And that was truly a renaissance period for wrestling. And then Young Kyle was tape trading with a guy in Japan. I was getting all the All Japan, Big Japan shows, Pan Craze shows. I was a very cultured high schooler back in the day, uh, getting Pan Craze on VHS and it was what it was, and I read a book about those days. But anyways, I liked Kevin Nash better, so I'm pretty excited for this. But we'll see. we got to open it up. we got to see if it's any good inside. The packaging's fine. We'll see where it goes from here. You know how it goes. Let's see what's happening with Nash. Got that Legends logo we talked about. There it is. See you later. Off to that side. There it goes. Plastic prison time. I didn't realize we have two extra set of hands with this Nash. Not messing around in the hands department. Got that soft good shirt as well, as we said. Got to cut him out. He's got the old rubber band going on. Good for him. There it goes. Get these hands out. Get these hands out. Come on. There it is. And Nash. There we go. See you later off to the side. Rubber band. Get out of here. All right. Let's look at these hands first with uh, Nash. Jeez, what a mess. See you later. Oh, right off the screen. There it goes. 
So, on uh, Big Sexy, yes, Big Sexy, we got two C-grip hands, we got gripping hands, probably the most boring hands, but probably the most functional if you want to hold a steel chair, you want to hold an accessory or something. And then we get the exact opposite hands of what is on him. We get a fist, you guys know I love a good fist, and then uh, you get the uh, two sweet hands as well. So he's too sweet and all over the place. I can see some people giving him the double two sweets, or maybe neither. Who knows? Choose your own adventure, as I always like to say. Then you get the outsider shirt going on here. I like the material they use uh, at Mattel. I don't know what material this is called, like a spandex type material. It's got a little bit of a stretch to it. I always like that. Uh, the outsider's graphic, though, the picture here looks a little kind of faint. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's the best work I've ever seen. It's it's definitely better than some of the customs you see out there, but there are some really good custom shirt places, as we all know, out there. Uh, so I know some people are buying another Nash just to get this. I don't know if that's quite worth it. You might want to just spend $5 to one of those places and get one. But at the same time, I see one to have a, one to match. Uh, so choose your own adventure, as they say. But solid enough, solid enough. But now we get down to old Kevin Nash here. Uh, do we have any paint imperfections? That's the first thing I want to look for, and I don't see any. Uh, that NWO, the silver and red and the black here, I can see that being scuffed up or having some issues, and mine looks pretty clean. Um, little, I don't know. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. All right. I, I thought I saw something. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, so then we get to Kevin Nash. He does have the two sweet hands. He's got the fisted hand going on. We got our elite articulation here, but we do not have the double-jointed elbows. Uh, no pinless joints. None of that going on. Uh, he does have double jointed knees though, so we will put that there. But then all the traditional elite articulation is here. You got the bicep swivels, of course, the thigh swivels, the double jointed knees, the ankles move around. You got the waist, you got the ab crunch, the head is movable, of course. Uh, is the head removable though? It is not. So we know with most elites now, I think uh, starting was it 87 or 88, the heads are easily popped off. They haven't got there quite yet with the Legends, but I would assume 2022 we'll probably see Legends uh, be able to do that, I would assume. Does this bandana come off? And it does. So the bandana does come off of here. So I don't know. We'll put the glamour shots up. Do you like it better with the bandana or without? I probably like it better with. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's got to match his brother, Scott Hall, and we'll show Scott Hall here shortly. I'm sure he fits on a ringside stand. I say it all the time. Spend your money on your figures, not your stands. Ringsidecollectibles.com. Use discount code Kyle. One thing I know some people don't like is the flare on the side, how it's molded in. I don't know. I think I think it's a split decision there. You can chime in how you feel about it. Some people would like soft good flare. Maybe save that for an Ultimate Edition or something. I don't know if I would like that to be soft goods. It would feel kind of strange and kind of out of place. But also I can see how some people think this molded on is out of place. So I don't know. It depends what side of the fence you sit on uh, with that one. Uh, all in all, he does have his tattoos on his arm. They do look pretty good. Uh, nice color in those. The face is a little interesting. It's almost, I'm looking at it. We got true effects, of course. But it's like the beard, like one half of the beard is darker and this side is lighter. So that is a little strange. I didn't notice that until I looked at it up close. He does have a little dot on his nose as well, which is unfortunate as usual. Um, but all in all, it's a, it's an okay Kevin Nash. I don't know if this is the greatest Kevin Nash figure of all time. Actually, I'm going to tell you it's not. Uh, it's probably top five. Top five, but uh, not my favorite ever. But he's got the two sweet there. And of course, let's grab that Scott Hall while we're here. So there's the, the last series legend, Scott Hall. Now you can complete this Outsiders tag team. I feel like you have to have both of these. You can't just have one or the other. They go together. Looks good to me. I think they both look good together. I don't know what to say you guys, but I'm glad we got both of them. We got them in their bandanas. The bandanas are the exact same, it looks like. Obviously colored differently. Some people like the Scott Hall. Some people didn't like the Scott Hall face. I'm okay with it. I thought it was better. Uh, I don't think it was the greatest Scott Hall head scan of all time, but I don't think it was anywhere near the worst. And that's where I sit. But yeah, there's your outsiders right there. But then let's pull out some other Kevin Nashes over the years. This is probably the lamest Kevin Nash elite. This is from that WCW four pack. And they had Scott Hall in that. And they were wearing different NWO shirts. That drove me nuts. Why wouldn't you put them both in the black and white? Uh, kind of represent that initial nitro. I'm sure we'll get that one of these days out there. But that's an awfully lame Kevin Nash. I think this is the most lame Mattel Kevin Nash uh, yet. Uh, I believe this one was the NWO Wolfpack Nash. We got, uh, this was Ringside Collectibles exclusive, if I remember correctly. And it looks like a ton of reuse from this one. Uh, we got the silver dots on the new one here that we don't on the old one. 
Uh, but a lot of reuse between these two, and it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Getting the most out of your molds. We know how that goes. We've talked about that at nauseum on the channel. Uh, but some people like this one. You know, some people don't. Uh, the braid and the hair in the back and stuff and the glasses. I don't know. It depends which Nash you're looking for. But I think there's room for both of these in your collection. There definitely is in mine, as you can see that right here. But then probably my favorite Kevin Nash uh, Mattel figure. It's got to be this Outsiders one. Was this like Elite 16? Uh, I don't know. I'm going off the top of my head. Like Elite 16, 17, somewhere down there. Uh, they had that and they had Diesel in the same set, which was very interesting. I always like this Kevin Nash a whole lot, though. This is a very, very pricey Kevin Nash at this point in time. Probably will be for a while. I don't know if this one will take the value down on this one because... Uh, this one is uh, you know, a little different. He's got the blonder hair and a little bit more sexy, I guess we'll call it, on this one. Uh, so this one's probably my favorite. Gun to my head right now, this is my favorite. Uh, these two are pretty close. This is definitely the least favorite. But all in all, it's good to get a new Kevin Nash out there at retail. It's been a long time since retail has had a Kevin Nash figure. We've had Diesel a few times. We've got a new Diesel Ultimate coming in the new gen ring next year. Uh, and then we've had exclusives two exclusives right here so to get a kevin nash at straight retail like i said it's been back to like elite 16 uh so being a target exclusive still pretty hard to get uh harder to get than your traditional that you could order off ringside or anywhere else but uh pretty cool to be back in the line but what do you guys think kevin nash legends 12 pass or smash as some might say what did you do would you pick it up i'm sure a lot of people will some of you guys have probably seen the last sets go to clearance and are probably playing a little bit of that long game that's understandable as well. But you guys tell me your thoughts on this Kevin Nash, what your favorite Kevin Nash is. Let me know that in the comments as well. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. And then follow me on social media, SirPaul64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. And of course, support the channel. Go to Pro Wrestling Tees, search Kyle Peterson. So there it is, Kevin Nash. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Mattel Legends Series 12 Elite Unboxing and Review, and these are Target exclusives, at least at this point in time, as you guys are fully aware, but today we're taking a look at DX Billy Gunn, and we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel, we're going to take a look at the packaging, we're going to talk about it, we're going to unbox it, we're going to talk about it, we'll see where it goes from there, and we'll compare it to a few other Billy Gunn figures so let's take a look at the packaging first we know this legends packaging by now we've seen it at our local targets uh billy gunn i have not seen in person as of filming this video but give it a couple of weeks i'll be swimming in them as you'll see on my figure hunt i'm sure uh but you got the glamour shot of billy right there you got the wwe logo much like the nwo one they got the dx spray paint going on billy gunn true effects same thing up there and the elite logo as well so billy gunn he's had a few elites over the years and like we said we'll compare those uh, at the end of the video to a couple other elites he's had and then we know in future legends elite lineups what we got here coming we got road dog coming we've got china coming i believe somewhere in there uh x Pac and triple h i think we're getting the whole dx army hopefully we get a build a figure or some kind of exclusive or something to get that jeep that would be really cool i would like to see that really uh have that whole display i think that would be really cool to figure that out We'll see. We'll see what happens there. But very cool packaging here. It's it's part of that Nitro invasion, as we all know, and that's what the whole set of those guys will be. It would have been kind of cool to just see a Legend series of all DX characters. That would have been an interesting one, but I also understand why they would do it in each set. Keep you coming back for more is what they're trying. It's an old retailer trick. But there's Billy Gunn on the side. You got the DX logo once again. Same thing on the other side. Warnings down here. Nobody cares. And then you got the blurb, you got the tail of the tape, you got a glamour shot, you got the DX spray paint everywhere, you got the rest of the lineup down below, all that fun stuff. And I will say that uh, a lot of questions about Jake Roberts, Billy Gunn, how are we getting these guys? They're part of AEW now. Uh, from what I've heard and been told, they're part of a Legends deal. Uh, this was kind of all-encompassing, and Mattel being extremely smart, they're getting the most out of the guys they can do before that expires. Uh, that's why we're getting this Billy Gunn. That's why we got those Jakes before they expire and they don't get re-signed. Let's make who we can make as fast as we can. So that's why we're getting some of these. Uh, that's how I understand it. Uh, much like the Warlord, Powers of Pain Warlord. We didn't get Barbarian. People are like, why release Warlord without Barbarian? Well, if they're going to lose Warlord to a Legends deal, he's not going to be available say a year from now they get barbarian now you're in the same problem you make a barbarian no warlord i'm glad they made the warlord fingers crossed in a year or whatever it is maybe we'll get a barbarian maybe he will sign up for a legends deal so there you go there's a lot a lot of business there putting on the old business hat as you guys know 
All right, Billy Gunn, titles WWE Tag Team Champion, Intercontinental Champion, and Hardcore Champion. As a member of D-Generation X and one half of your WWE Tag Team Champions of the World, Billy Gunn was a cornerstone of the Attitude Era. He and his New Age Outlaw partner Road Dogg dominated the tag team division before joining Triple H, X-Pac, and China in DX and declaring war against WCW. The DX Army invaded WCW headquarters, live events, and even Monday Night Nitro before finally declaring victory and telling WCW... We got two words for you. So there you go. Billy Gunn, what would have happened to his career if he wouldn't have joined uh, DX? Or I guess the New Age Outlaws first, then DX. I mean, New Age Outlaws were at a next level of uh, hotness. You know, Cass and Enzo kind of came to that a little bit. A lot of mic work. You, they kind of had that same thing going on. Not quite to the degree of New Age Outlaws. Uh, but that was the last team that kind of came together like that. Guys you knew but didn't really know they were together. Uh, just interesting how uh, the New Age Outlaws went. You know, he was rockabilly with the Honky Tonk Man before this. So uh, Billy Gunn, his career really did hit a next level. It really went to the the stratosphere once New Age Outlaws got up and running. And same with Road Dog, he was kind of floundering a little bit. Obviously, Jeff Jarrett, Angle, and all that had passed. Just interesting, two guys that didn't seem like they'd go together went together so well, and we don't see that a ton in wrestling. But anyways, get off my soapbox, Kyle. Unbox this. See what's going on here. Got the Legends logo in the back. There it is. See you later. Bam. There it goes. A little plastic prison. Billy Gunn. There he is. Looking only like he can look. We got extra hands. We got his little helmet with the uh, foliage in there. Foliage? Is that what it's called? Foliage? That sounds weird. Plants. He's got a plant in his head. There you go. Uh, let's cut him out here in the plastic prison. Like we know and like we said, we're going to get more of the DX Army here soon. Whoa, I'm busting through the plastic. Holy cow. Watch out. Watch out. What are we doing here? There it is. There it is. See you later. All right. Can I get these bands off? There it is. There it is. Now, first thing I noticed, too, is he has the camo pants on. I should have grabbed my Tommaso Ciampa figure. I would assume these are the same pants. Getting the most out of your molds, getting the reuse out of it makes total sense. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to see these in the future as well. So I have no problems with them doing that. Uh, I do like the looks of these pants. They look very good. Got the ankle, let's straighten him out. He's looking good. I like the Soft Goods DX shirt much better than the DX shirts of the past that we'll show with some of these other Billy Guns. He's got his hands all splayed out, like uh, given you know, the old Bret Hart position here. But you also have the C clamp hands here. No fist, unfortunately. Two C clamps, no fist, but two open hands. I guess it's okay because this isn't really going to be my wrestling Billy Gun on my display. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably in that same boat. I do like the DX helmet going on here. Uh, the X is a little off-center, it seems like. Eh, it's pretty close, I guess. Uh, we got the plant going on there. Is the plant removable? It is not. I, okay, it falls down. I do like how this looks. I thought this was, it looks like duct tape. As you guys remember, he had duct tape on there. I mean, it looks, they did a really good job molding on this helmet. And then, the, uh, the, of course, the grass and everything looks really good as well. I like it. Not terrible. Unfortunately, he does not have the goggles. I know he had goggles as well. We don't get those. Not the end of the world, if you ask me out there on the goggles. Uh, the hair, it's the traditional Billy Gunn kind of hair, shaved on the sides, long in the back. Very 90s. Very 90s look, of course. Uh, but a strong look. Uh, it's better than some of his, actually. And we'll talk and we'll show those shortly here. But uh, not terrible on that department. Uh, how does he look underneath? Let's let's undress him, huh? Let's get his clothes off. Let's let's take Billy Gunn's clothes off. Let's see what's going on. And I could see people reusing these. You could put these on Mr. T. You could do a lot of stuff with these pants. Oh, it looks like we got white gear underneath. Oh yeah, we got Billy Gunn gear. So I'm glad this is a little bit of a two-in-one figure. Uh, I guess I was thinking maybe he would just have black tights on underneath and everything else, but no, he's got his uh, ring gear on under here. So that is great for you guys that collect. Uh, you gosh, it's gonna be tough to get these off and on though. I'm not looking forward to doing that. Uh, but it looks good. You got good uh, lips all over him, of course. Billy Gunn, he's known for these, like a young Dolph Ziggler almost before Dolph Ziggler, but uh, pretty good. We do have a little bit of staining around his belly button and stuff. Oh yeah, we got a lot of staining actually. Got a few little pin stains on his biceps, his shoulder, his abs. Uh, his back shoulder, so it is bleeding on that DX shirt just a little bit, uh, so that's a watch out out there. But yeah, he does have his traditional tights and stuff, so you can have a working man's Billy Gun if you want to in your collection. So I, I, I do like that. I won't go all the way to take this off right now. It's going to take some work, especially getting over those boots. I wish they were almost tearaway pants, but 
That looks a little suspect sometimes as well. Uh, but the true effects does not look terrible on this one. There is no pinless joints. There is no double jointed elbows on this one. Uh, removable hands, of course. The head moves around. But not bad. This is better than the last Billy Gun we got. And the last Billy Gun was in the pink. I believe this was the WWE Target exclusive. Once again, Hall of Champions line. I do not like the head sculpt on this one at all. This was a hot mess from the get-go. Uh, probably my least favorite Billy Gun. And the Road Dog we did have in that set to match these as well. I'm putting the new one over this all day long. But then you go way back to the old Elite Sculpt days. This is probably the best. I like the neon green. Uh, I just The head sculpt on this one is probably his best work. But this one's not terrible. I'm not going to throw this under the bus. Uh, but this one, this one seems like they tried to improve on this one a little bit. But this is the old way of doing things. And sometimes, if it's not broke, don't fix it. We like some of that sculpting. True effects goes both ways in my eyes. Sometimes it's great. Uh, rarely does it seem to be in the middle. It's either really good or really bad. Uh, this one is pretty good, I think. Uh, the eyes are centered okay. He does look like he has a little bit of scruff on his chin, but I'm not sure what that is exactly. But an okay Billy Gun, and this one works a lot better once you get the rest of the army going and you put them all together on a shelf. That's when this one's going to really pop. I hope those actually happen. I'm sure they will, but you know we've been burned before in the past. That's why it's a little scary to drag them out into sets as we go because then people get released, things happen, plans change, stuff like that. That's why I think I almost would have liked this set to be just the DX Army set. I think that would have been something neat, something cool, something we'd really remember as Legends 12 was all the DX Army figures. Maybe it's just an idea out there. But what do you guys think? You guys tell me below in the comments. But Billy Gunn, pretty solid. Pretty solid. I'm going to give this one um, a pass. And I think I might have to get two to get this one in wrestling gear. I didn't think of that until now. But here we are. It might be time to do it. So there it is. Billy Guns. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Mattel WWE Elite Legends Series 12, the Target Exclusives unboxing and review, and this time an all-time favorite of mine, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Always exciting to get another Hot Rod figure, but Mattel has had a lot of struggles with the Hot Rod over the years. Uh, some really god-awful figures, and then some great ones, like that Mr. T uh, Roddy Piper Boxing 2-Pack. That's a phenomenal Piper head. But then we've had some starts and stops, and it's just all over. It's like they get him kind of pretty close where we like it, then they go in a different direction, and I unfortunately think we might have some of that here, but we'll see. we got to unbox it. we got to dig in like we always do. Might as well say it. We're going to do this like we do all the unboxings on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We'll see where it goes from there, and we'll do a little comparison at the end. But there he is, the old Hot Rod, loving me some Hot Rod. I'm kind of shocked we don't get the bagpipes that we got with the entrance grates way back in the day. I'm surprised they've never reused that mold uh, in these pipers. There's a lot of people that could use that. And even if Piper didn't have the bagpipes in, in this actual outfit and everything else, I don't know if anybody would be against that. I think that would be a nice accessory to get back on the market. I do have to feel that sometime, fingers crossed, maybe late 2022, we're going to get a Rowdy Roddy Piper Ultimate Edition. Uh, it's just, it has to be done. It has to be done. I would imagine we would get bagpipes with that one. We'll see what happens. But there's Piper there. Uh, just has extra hands. Not a lot going on here. We do get a shirt on him that is different than his traditional Hot Rod shirt or even his Panther shirt, uh, like a WWE merch shirt going on. But we've got True Effects, Glamour Shot, WWE logo, Roddy Piper, uh, Elite 12, Elites. There you go. Series 12, I should say. On the side, you got the Glamour Shot of the Hot Rod, Warnings, UPCs, Glamour Shot, same thing. And then, of course, the back, you got the cross cell, we got JYD, we got Kevin Nash, we got Billy Gunn, and of course, Piper. Of course, we're empowering the next generation through play. Not working with my kids, they only play on their iPads. Uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper at the top there, Elite logo. We got the blurb, we'll read that. Let's see what it says about the old hot Scott, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Titles, Intercontinental Champion, World Tag Team Champion, WCW United States Champion. I love that WCW United States Championship run, which is strangely enough, but I was so so jazzed that older Piper got a title belt. Just, you know, he didn't get a lot of title belts. You know, he did get the Intercontinental title, but you know where I'm going. Just when they think they got all the answers, Hot Rod changes the questions. There's only one wild, unpredictable, loudmouth brawler that everyone loves to hate, and his name is Rowdy Roddy Piper. From Piper's Pit to the main event at the original WrestleMania, to his rivalry with Hulk Hogan that spanned decades the rowdy one made himself into a global icon. So true. Every superstar who ever stepped into the ring with him learned that sooner or later, everybody pays the piper. And I feel like everybody pays the piper has been used in a lot of these uh, throughout the years, which it's fitting enough. It's fitting enough. Funny thing is, these will be on the shelf about the same time the Walmart exclusive rowdy piper, uh, John Nada or Nada, 
uh, from uh, They Live is coming out, and I cannot wait to get that one. I am very, I'm actually more excited about the Mattel uh, They Live figure than actually this Piper, which seems really weird. But I've been a They Live fan since that movie came out as a kid. That was always shown on like Showtime or something when I was a little kid, one of those. And I used to watch it all the time. And it's a great movie. If you've never seen it, man, you're missing out. It's definitely Piper's best movie. He's got a few that are okay, though. Uh, maybe I'm just a Roddy Piper sucker, but I did love They Live. I'm excited for that figure. Of course, I have the NECA one. We reviewed the NECA one on the channel, so check that bad boy out. But I'm excited to get this Piper too, and I will say I got this via the mail, via Target. I have not seen this in my local store yet. This is probably the most beat-up packaging I've ever had from Target. It has some dings and rips all over it. Good thing I am an out-of-box collector, uh, as this one would not meet men on card standards out there. So there you go. Legends logo in the back. We've seen that before. See you later off to the side. All right, let's get down to the brass tacks on Piper. There he is. Looking only like he can look, and he's got two fisted hands, and he's got two gripping hands. That's all you need with him. No extra heads, nothing else there. Uh, but we got some good detail going on in this, so let's see. Pull these hands out. Man, they're tough to get out. There goes Piper. See you later. Bam, there, stick the landing. Beautiful. Okay, so like I said, two fisted hands. We don't need to go into that. We know our hands. We know what they're like. I don't think I need to bore you with hand talk. Uh, but I do like this Piper, but this is interesting. Weird. So I got extra shirt on mine, and it's like, it just rips off. So that's very strange. It's like it didn't get cut all the way. So I didn't notice that. That's strange. I've never had that happen, but it just rips off. It was perforated, so it just tore right off. But that was strange. I thought it was something weird. Uh, one thing I did not know about this one until I got it out of the package here, maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention, that we got a soft goods kilt with this. So I do like that. It's usually we get a lot of rubber ones. Uh, soft goods always the way to go. It does look better. Of course, we do have the soft goods shirt with this one. Much like the Kevin Nash, it, it has a little bit of a fade to it. Like it looks like a vintage tee. Uh, I don't know if this is a legit, uh, my brain tells me this is a legit WWE merchandise shirt back in the day. I assume it would be. Uh, I used to wear my hot rod as a little kid in elementary. I'd wear my warrior shirt, my hot rod shirt, and of course I had a Texas tornado shirt I wore the heck out of as well. Uh, I wore those all the time. Those were, those were my guys. Piper, Texas Tornado, Legion of Doom, of course, Demolition before them, Ultimate Warrior. Uh, you can imagine, those were my boys uh, back in the WWE days. And now this Piper... My big concern about this Piper was the head sculpt on this. And actually, it does look better in hand. I'm staring at it right now. It did look kind of like he had a far away look to him, like it was just off a little bit. But this is truly one of those times where it's much better in hand staring right at it. Much like that Survivor Series Hulk Hogan we unboxed on the channel maybe a month ago or so. Still not my favorite head sculpt we've ever seen with Roddy Piper. It, it's nowhere near just slam slam dunk. But it is definitely better than I anticipated it to be based off of the promo shots that were out there. So that is always happy to report. Especially a guy like, like Roddy Piper. Very happy to see that out there. Uh, no double jointed elbows on this one. Uh, he does have knee pads. He's got his blue trunks under here. We'll get some glamour shots of him. Uh, disrobed for you guys out there that love that. Uh, the hair on this is really good. It's got kind of the, the piper, I don't know, I don't know what you call that, the poof to it at the back, kind of the straight lines. Uh, just Roddy Piper. I mean, this is, I believe, intercontinental era Roddy Piper. Ringside collectible stand, I'm sure he's going to fit on there. Why would he not? Of course he does. Spend your money on your figures, not your stands. Ringsidecollectibles.com. Use discount code Kyle. Save 10%. Uh, he's got the RP on the boots, and he's got the socks, which is a lost look. That's a lost look, the socks up there. Just looks old school pro wrestling. I love it. He's got his wrist tape going on. Uh, just a middle of the road, almost a frown face, but more middle of the road face on this too, I should mention. Just a solid Piper. Not bad. Uh, you can't just go to the well with the straight hot rod Piper every single time. Speaking of that Piper, this was, I believe, Target exclusive, once again, Hall of Famer Roddy Piper. And you're seeing a pattern here is a lot of the superstars, the legends, you get as store exclusives because that's an easy sell to that Target, Walmart buyer, whoever it is. If you try to say, hey, I got an exclusive Otis figure for you, they're probably not going to be jumping out of their uh, chair. They're, they put their business hat on and they want a figure or a character they have heard of. And that's where these Roddy Pipers and all these legends come from. Uh, and even like the Royal Rumble sets, you know, that Dakota Kai slips in, but hey, you're giving them Yokozuna. Uh, you're giving them Bret Hart. You're giving them stuff like that. That's how those get through. So it's all a business at the end of the day. And I think we, a lot of us forget that. We all forget that, hey, they're here. This isn't a nonprofit. They're here to make money. And there's certain ways to make more money. Store exclusives is a massive way for all toy companies. And not just toy companies, 
every company that sells their wares at Targets, Walmarts, or whatever. It's about exclusivity these days. That's the way the world has went, the business world. So take that business lesson to the bank. So there you go. But Piper, I like this one. Uh, I don't quite like this as much as the um, Piper from uh, the Mr. T 2-pack. I think that's probably the best Mattel Piper we've seen so far. I mean, just that younger head scan just looks perfect Piper. This isn't bad, but I actually do like this Hall of Fame one. Uh, this is a pretty good Piper. I wouldn't mind seeing this redone, uh, preferably in an Ultimate Edition. Give us a soft kilt on it. Uh, you could actually dress this one up, and maybe I'll do that for some of the glamour shots. We'll put this on this one, see how that looks. Uh, this, there's some stuff we can do there. Uh, but Piper, I'm going to buy every Piper. I'm buying every Elite you know, but if I was just dabbling in Elites, Piper is a guy I would be a completionist of. I'm getting every Piper that comes out. I'm getting every Terry Funk. I'd be getting every Ric Flair, Ultimate Warrior, face-painted wrestlers. You know how it goes. But Piper is a guy... Uh, if I wasn't a completist, I would be picking this up, no doubt in my mind. I love Roddy Piper, so there you go. But what do you guys think? You tell me in the comments. So there it is, WWE Legend Series 12, Rowdy Roddy Piper. So welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another WWE Legend Series 12 Mattel Elite unboxing and review, and of course the Target exclusive with these. And today, we've got the Junkyard Dog. The Junkyard Dog makes his return to the WWE Elite lineup as a Target exclusive here in Legends 12. And a little bonus, we're going to unbox the Chase version, the Blue Tights JYD as well, as I got both of these via the mail from Target. Uh, lucky me, lucky me, the Chases continue. Uh, JYD, unfortunately, seems to probably end up being the peg warmer of this set. We'll see how it nets out. It's still early. But JYD, a very interesting dynamic in the wrestling world. Extremely popular in the Mid-South days, as most of you guys know. His battles, his blinding it with the free birds and all that. Uh, a lot of big time moments for JYD. He did go to the WWF uh, in the you know the rock and wrestling time frame. A little bit after that, he was a big part of the LJN series. Every kid had the JYD LJN figure, and then you know his weight got hurting on him and stuff. He fell out of the WWF, kind of bounced around the Indies a little bit. Went to WCW. I remember being kind of excited. I think it was him and Paul Orndorff for a team. What were they? The World Six Man was Tommy Rich their partner. I'd have to go back and look. I'm going off the childhood memories there. But it seemed like he was a big deal in WCW when I was 8, 9, 10 years old. Uh, but I think most older fans are like, this is a, a shell of the former JYD at the time. And he did have some drug problems, it sounded like. And I believe the last time we ever saw JYD was that on an ECW show in Atlanta. I could be wrong. And I know he had some feuds with New Jack and stuff. And I believe he died in a car accident. So uh, from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows, of course. But JYD is one, uh, especially people a little older than me, they all remember the Junkyard Dog. You ask my aunt about wrestling, she always brings up Junkyard Dog, Superfly Jimmy Snuka. You know, she's 10, 15 years older than me, whatever it is, 20 years. Uh, she remembers these kind of guys. And JYD was a big deal in a lot of places. And it's good he got back in the Legends line because a lot of people were probably wanting a JYD in their collection. They didn't go all the way back to that old Elite that we got in the white trunks. And, of course, we're going to compare that at the end of this video. Funny thing is that JYD White, there was a Walgreens in my area. And about a year ago, it finally sold. But it was on the Walgreens shelf uh, all that time. So about a year ago, it finally did sell. But always found that ironic. You got to check those off the beaten path Walgreens. I tell you what, you never know what you might find out there. Anyways, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. See where it goes from there. And let's start with the regular edition JYD first. I think that's uh, probably the way to start. But there's JYD. I think when most people think JYD, they think red tights like this. And I do think a lot of that is because of his LJN back in the day. That's just what I assume. He does come with this crown. His WrestleMania 3 with Harley Race, of course. Getting reuse out of that crown. He does come with this dog collar and chain. That is always pretty cool. I like that. True effects. JYD glamour shot. You got his name. WWE Legend logo. Series 12 up there. The Elite logo. There's old JYD looking only like he can look on the side. Same thing on the other side. UPCs on the bottom, warnings. On the back, you got the rest of the cross sell of the lineup there. You got the Junkyard Dog uh, glamour shot. And then, of course, we got the tail of the tape. We got the little blurb. Let's read that. Let's see what it says about our boy, the Junkyard Dog. There are few superstars from rock and wrestling era, era of WWE more beloved than the Junkyard Dog. With incredible power, smooth style, and overflowing charisma, JYD's bite is just as fierce as his bark. He would strut his way to the ring to get the crowd going and then wipe out his opponent with a massive headbutt or thump. 
Power Slam. Anyone across the ring new to watch out because Junkyard Dog is coming to grab them cakes. I love it. I love it. Coming to grab them cakes. I was hoping that line would be in there because guess what? As Kyle was reading this, he was going to end with that. And it actually was here. So kudos to Mattel. I think Robert probably did that. Kudos to you, Robert. You and I got the same thoughts. Got to end with grab them cakes. And he did. I love it. I love it. There you go. There it is. See you later. Over the top. Hitting the camera. All right. Plastic prison time. Yeah, it looks all right. I thought I saw something, but I didn't. Plastic Prison, JYD, you got extra hands as well. I didn't call that out. Crown, extra hands, dog collar chain. A lot to like about this one. Let's get him out here. Maybe. All right. There it is. There it is. Come on. Oh, there goes that chain. There it is. The hands. See you later. Let's get out of here. All right, put JYD to the side. So we got two fisted hands on JYD. That's the way it should be. And then you got two open hands. So my brain is going to say another point of difference here. I'm going to probably put uh, the open hands on this chase, closed fist on this one. Bam, there's just another point of difference between the two. Maybe you put the crown on one, you don't on the other. Trying to make your chases even that much more different where it really truly seems like two different figures. That's always, that's always the art at the end of the day. Little plastic piece that holds the chain. See you later. Get out of here. All right, crown. We got the old purple crown. Now, is this the same crown as Harley Race? I'm going to look to the side here. I'm going to look at my Harley Race. I'm going to investigate from afar. I think so. My eyes, uh, these contacts, uh, it's about time to get my eyes checked. Uh, I do believe this is the same crown. I believe it is the same. It would make sense. Get the most out of your molds. Reuse. It's a nice little Easter egg touch for those that remember the match against Harley Race. It would be cool to have the cape to go with him as well. You could really dress this up. Uh, very cool. But we get the cape. Or the cape. The crown. So there it is. And then we get the dog collar. Gotta love a good dog collar. I love that this is actually real chain. I don't want to say it's like the thickest steel chain. But it has some weight. Listen. It has some weight to it. I like that. I like that chain a whole lot. I believe it's the exact same chain as the other JYD. Let's just pull that out right now. Might as well. Here's that JYD in the white. Very iconic is white, but I swear the red is more iconic. But we'll put that right over here for now. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the chain and collar is exact reuse. So these Legend series we're seeing from the last few series, they're getting a lot of reuse. Getting the most out of their molds. Uh, going in the Wayback Machine, grabbing some things, making some changes. Uh, not hurting the old school collectors like myself and doing a straight re-release. But re-releasing, using the molds, changing it up a little bit, giving us some differences. And stuff like this, uh, you're not using this accessory for anybody else, so it makes sense. Uh, I could see people buying two of these, and you could take the collar off that one, put it on here, and all of a sudden you've got a chain for a dog collar match. We do know Boss Fight Studios released an accessories pack with a dog collar match, but you can make your own very easily uh, with these two chains if you wanted to. I mean, you could very easily do that. But I like that chain. That is an amazing accessory. Kudos Mattel there. Then you get to the JYD, and it's going to be the same body as this one. It is. It's the same thing across the board. I got to tell you what, though, guys. Uh, the head scans are different. They're very similar but different. You know it's JYD either way. At least I do. But this white one on the old school Elite all day long, this is the JYD. When I close my eyes and I think of JYD, this is the face I look at and I think of. This almost reminds me of old school JYD, Mid-South, a lot younger version. This is middle of the road WWE version to WCW version is how this feels to me. I almost, because in WCW I remember him wearing the white tights uh, primarily. So this almost feels like WCW version to me. This is a younger one, but I tell you what, a guy like JYD, he always had that kind of expression on his face that we get here. This is a little bit too plain for JYD as far as the face goes to me. But I could see why they'd want to do something different. I'm glad they just didn't re-release that same head sculpt again. But I do like that one a heck of a lot better. Uh, but this JYD is fine. I mean, it's a basic figure here. Uh, you know, he was not the most cut up guy. Uh, you go back to his early stuff. You look on Peacock. You look some of those old Mid-South episodes. Man, he was a jacked up solid dude. Got a little bigger over time. Is You know, it happens, I guess. Uh, but boy, old school JYD was a force to be reckoned with. And he's got the thump on his butt there, of course. Uh, JY dog on the side, on both sides there. Uh, is it a dog? Yep, he's got a dog on the side of his boots. Of course, the white boots, the blue stars. Very cool. I mean, this is a solid figure. I think this will sell because a lot of people miss this one. But my gut tells me JYD is going to be the, no pun intended, the dog of Series 12. I think you'll be able to find him fairly easy. Um, that's just what my gut is telling me. 
But all in all, solid enough figure. I think the accessories really help bring it up a notch. My only down is the face. It doesn't have enough of that JYD face that we get with this white one. I don't know. I can't explain it, but it is what it is. But this one, to me, feels like a younger JYD, where this feels like more of a mid-80s to an early 90s JYD. And I could also be crazy, so who knows? But there's those two right there. But let's open up this Chase one real quick. Everything is the same on the packaging. The only difference is the figure. Uh, let's pull him out. Let's see what's going on. See you later. Get out of here. Pop everything out. Like I said, I will use the different hands. I think that's the way to go with this. There it is. See you later. Get out of here. There it goes. These hands. These hands are tough to get out. I don't know why. The last pair were tough too. There it is. See you later. Get out of here. All right, so we got the extra hands, we got the chain, we already talked about those, we talked about the crown. Now what's different about this JYD? It's the same head sculpt, same upper body, it is just the blue. And it says the same things, it has the dog but in blue, the stars in red, the white uh, boots here. But then you get the royalish blue JY dog on the side, of course, and you get the thump on the back. So a lot of the same stuff here. I'm not sure though, which one do I like better, the blue or the red? Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. We'll save that for the rankings. As you guys know, at the end of the week, for those that like to watch it all together, I put them all together with special bonus rankings at the end of the video. Of course, ringside collectible stands. Use discount code Kyle. Save 10%. Got to put old JYD on the stand. So there it is. The Junkyard Dog. Three different ones now from Mattel. I don't know if we'll get another Junkyard Dog anytime soon, so I would recommend going out and get one of these because... I just don't see us getting another JYD in the next you know, five years, probably. Maybe, maybe. We'll see what happens. But I think this is your best be best chance to get him now or forever hold your peace on the dog. Maybe some of you guys are playing the long game. I understand that as well. But you got the blue. We got the red. We got the white or red, white, and blue. Very, very uh, 4th of July. Very uh, American right here is what we got here with these colors. But there it is, the Junkyard Dog Legends Series 12. All right, guys, it's time to rank WWE Legends Series 12, the Target exclusive, from my least favorite to my favorite. And this, as usual, they're always difficult. It's like choosing between your children. Well, not that close, but it's tough to choose sometimes. And this one's a different one to choose because nothing here extremely blew me away. I don't think we'll ever hear that Legends Series 12 was the greatest Legends set of all time, but it is a way to fill some holes. We got the DX Billy Gun that's going to fill out an army jyd getting back out there possibly for the last time or at least the last time in a long time giving people another kevin nash to match that scott hall so once again kind of completing a team out there and then roddy piper just as his wrestling career his figures a wild card you never know if you're gonna get a good head scan you never know if you're gonna get a really bad one maybe you'll get somewhere in the middle so nothing that's gonna blow anybody away but sometimes you need stuff like this to help build up your teams complete tag teams complete uh, team series getting a character that we're not going to see a whole lot back in, and uh, Roddy Piper's of the world to really lead the stardom. So there you go. So nothing really blew me away, and I'm going to say that these are all very close. These are all pretty close. Pretty tough to rank a set like this for me. Uh, that's just the way I see it, but uh, a sleeper. So who I'm going to start with the back. We'll start with uh, my least favorite. We'll work our way to the favorite here. But for my least favorite, I'm going to put the JYD Chase as my least favorite. Uh, two JYDs. I see why they did that a little bit, and it was a very easy repaint to do. I'm sure some people out there would have rather had a Piper probably me, uh, or Nash or something like that. But JYD's fair enough. He is a legend. He is a Hall of Famer. He's a guy we don't get very often. So I'm okay with getting two different versions of JYD. But I'm putting this one at the end just because I don't recall in my wrestling brain of him wearing blue. I remember the white and the red uh, most notably. So that's where I'm going to go with the blue on that one, uh, just as the last one. But then I'm going to go JYD in the red. And I got nothing against JYD. I like JYD. I like him enough, but it's just not enough meat on the bone. No dog uh, puns intended there. Uh, we do love the chains here. The chains are great. But the head sculpt on both of these, obviously it's the same figure, just lacking something. It's not terrible. I didn't want a rehash of the last one. I just don't know if this one was what I was exactly looking for. But still, good enough figure. I wouldn't turn this down. If you don't have a JYD in your collection, you definitely have to get one of these. Uh, I would do it in a heartbeat. So there you go. So now it gets a little bit more difficult even. So you got the two JYDs on the end. Uh, I'm not sure where to go. Uh, very difficult decision here. But my heart's going to win out on this. So I'm going to go Kevin Nash right there. 
Uh, a lot of reuse here. Uh, the extra beard color is a little different there. I, I do like this figure, uh, but once again, they're all kind of middle of the road. The, the distance between them are not that different, but I'm going to go Kevin Nash in the middle. Uh, that's just where my gut tells me. And like all these rankings at the end, you ask me a year from now, they might change. You know, this is just after first impressions, everything else. Uh, you know, Fuji's Kevin Nash, I'm just not sure. But I do like that we got this one to put with our Scott Hall. It's like I said, building these teams out, I think it makes sense. I like the idea, so there's that on Kevin Nash. And then we're down to the final two. And uh, I think this is going to surprise some people here, but I'm going to go for number two, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Obviously, Piper, uh, on my Mount Rushmore or just off my Mount Rushmore of all-time greats, I like this Piper enough, but it's not the most iconic Piper, especially this shirt. Uh, but I do like we got soft goods throughout. Like I said, a big improvement on this head. Uh, going into this, just off the glamour shots, the promo shots we saw online, Piper very possibly would have been last for me, which is just sacrilegious. But I'm glad, happy to report that his head does look better in person. Uh, I said it earlier, I'm very excited for the They Live Roddy Piper to come. I can't wait to get that figure. Hopefully, I got to assume sometime in November that'll come my way. I have it on pre-order, but it is hitting stores, so I think I'll find that fairly soon so watch out for that review when it comes which leaves us to billy gunn at number one uh maybe a head scratcher for some of you guys out there obviously billy gunn is nowhere near the top of my favorite wrestlers of all time uh billy gunn hit on my wife pretty hard and tried to sway her one night at an indie show uh way back in the day uh, and she said no thanks I'm not, I'm not interested in billy gunn i got that cool guy over there with that short hairdo back then he just graduated college i'm going home with him uh, that's what she said. But Billy Gunn, an interesting character out there. Uh, but Billy Gunn, the reason this went to the next level is we haven't had a Billy Gunn in a while, so that's cool. It's going to be part of that DX army we're going to build out, so that's another positive going for him. But just the accessories here. The uh, the shrubbridge, shrubbridge, is that a word? On his helmet here, that is pretty cool. The DX shirt is great. I can see people buying extra of these if they go to clearance one day just to use this DX shirt. I wouldn't be opposed to getting another DX shirt just to put on that Hall of Fame Billy Gunn we showed in that review. Uh, so you got a good soft goods DX shirt, which is always valuable. And then the camo pants. You can get some reuse from camo pants there. And then once again, this is truly a two-in-one figure. You take all this stuff off him, you've got Billy Gunn wrestling gear. So it's a two-in-one figure. So I, that's what gives this one the Duke. It's so versatile. It fits a bunch of different reasons. Uh, there's different reasons to buy this one, and they all add up to making him number one, which is shocking to me. As uh, out of favorite wrestlers here, Billy Gunn's probably my least favorite wrestler of all these. But got to call a spade a spade in the fig game, and I'm putting him at number one. But I would be interested to hear what your ranking is. Tell me your order. The order is the hardest part, but tell me your order on Legend Series 12. Do you agree with my thoughts? Do you feel this is kind of just a little bit of a fluff line? to fill out some gaps to complete some collections that's kind of how i see it but i'd love your input you guys let me know in the comments down below of course and then make sure you like this video make sure you subscribe to the channel turn the notification bell on you guys know i got videos every single day including about every wrestling figure that's ever been known to man uh, that's being released i think we've unboxed on the channel here so it really is a one-stop shop for wrestling figures and everything else to be reviewed under the sun follow me on social media sir paul 64 on twitter instagram the underscore kyle underscore peterson and of course pro wrestling tees.com support the channel pick up a t-shirt search kyle peterson for legend series 12 i'm kyle see you guys all real soon